வெல்கம் ஆல் டுடே லெட் இஸ் ஸ்டடி அபவுட் ஆர்ட் அண்ட் ஆர்கிடெக்சர் ஃப்ரம் த்ரீ தௌசண்ட் பிசி டு த ப்ரெசென்ட் டே மெனி சிவிலைசேஷன் ஹேவ் ஃப்ளரிஷ்ட் இன் இந்தியா இந்தியன் சப் கான்டினென்ட் ஈச் ஹேஸ் மேட் வேல்யூபிள் கான்ட்ரிபியூஷன்ஸ் டு இந்தியாஸ் ரிச் ஆர்ட் அண்ட் ஆர்கிடெக்சரல் ஹெரிட்டேஜ் செவரல் ஆஃப் த வேர்ல்ட்ஸ் மேஜர் ரிலீஜியன்ஸ் லைக் புத்திசம் ஜைனிசம் இந்துவிசம் அண்ட் இஸ்லாம் ஐதர் ஸ்டார்டட் இன் இந்தியா ஆர் ஃப்ளரிஷ்ட் ஹியர் much of the indian art and architecture therefore has a religious content indian art and architecture which have evolved through centuries is the result of socio economic and geographical conditions different types of indian art and architectural styles include from the expression over space and time transformed by the forces of history considered unique to india as a result of vast diversities a vast range of architectural specimens have evolved retaining a certain amount of continuity across its history art of arts of the indus valley civilization the arts of the indus valley civilization emerged during the second half of the third millennium bce the forms of art found from various sites of civilization include sculptures seal pottery gold jewelry terracotta figures etc these are as follows first one pottery the indus valley pottery mainly consisted of wheel made wares very few of them were are actually found to be handmade some of the important features of indus valley pottery can be summarized in the following manner it's a plain pottery a plain pottery is more common than painted ware and it is generally made up of red clay the painted the black painted ware has a fine coating of red sheep on which geometric and animal designs are executed in glossy black paint polychrome pottery is rare and mainly comprises may many small vases decorated with geometric pattern like red in red black and green perforated pottery includes a large hole at the bottom and a small hole all over the wall the pottery for household purpose is found in as many shapes and sizes as could be conceived for daily practical use the great variety of painted decorations and pictorial motifs include leaf patterns scales like this work wave pattern trees floral design were the most important creations next bronze casting the harappans practice the art of bronze casting on wide scale they use the lost wax technique in which the wax figures were first covered with the coating of clay and allowed to dry they use this technique for human as well as animal figures and the best example of the former is the form of dancing girl found in mohenjodaro the bronze casting was popularly at all the major centers of the indus valley civilization it is harappan speciality that bronze casting technique of the same nature are practiced even now in many parts of the country next stone statues the stone statues found at harappa and mohenjodaro are excellent examples of well defined figures made from rough stone pieces one of the remarkable example is the bust of the bearded man in stateite which is interpreted as a priest it has a shawl covering on the left shoulder and decorated with careful pattern the eyes are a little elongated and half closed as in meditative concentration the armlet is worn on the right hand and holds around the neck suggest a necklace terracotta images terracotta refers to the art of a clay sculpting the Indus Valley people also made terracotta images but compared to the stone and bronze statues the terracotta representations of human forms are crudded in the Indus Valley the most important among the Indus figures are those representing the mother goddess mask of horn deity 
toy carts uh, with wheels visuals rattles birds and animals gamesmen and disc uh, were also rendered in terracotta next seals thousands of seals usually made of stitite and occasionally with uh, agate cherite copper and terracotta with beautiful figures of animals such as unicorn bull rhinoceros tiger elephant bison goat buffalo etc have been discovered in the indus valley the realistic rendering of these animals is very in various modes is remarkable the purpose of producing seals seem to be mainly commercial however it appears that seals were also used as amulets as the mark of the identity of the carrier more like the modern day identity card some of the important figures uh, features of the seal can be seen from the following provisions the standard harappan seal was a square plaque of 2 into 2 square inches usually made from the soft river stone stetite the seal were engraved in a pitto pictographic script which are yet to be decip decip disappeared they all bear a great variety of motifs most often of animals including those of the bull with or without the hump the elephant tiger goat and also monsters the most remarkable seal is generally identified as a pashupati which depicts a human figure seated cross legged and surrounded by animals like elephant tiger rhinoceros and buffalo ornaments and beads ornaments used for decoration of harappan men and women were produced from material ranging from precious metal and gemstone to bones and baked clay women generally wore girdles earrings anklets with bell neck necklaces fillets armlets and finger rings were commonly worn by both sexes the rich people wore expensive ornaments made of gold while the poor had ornament made of bone shell or copper the bead industry seemed to have been well developed as beads are of varying shapes disc shaped cylindrical spherical barrel and segmented have been discovered varying arts have also been discovered with respect to its decoration some were decorated by incising or pa painting and some had design etched onto them the harappan people also made excellent figure of animals like monkeys and squirrels to be used as beads or heads of paints culture and re respect to clothes and garments culture with respect to clothes and garments spinning of cotton and wool seem to be common among indus valley people as is evident from the discovery of large number of spindles and spindle worlds it seemed to it seemed that both rich and poor practiced spinning it also appears from the archaeological findings that people of the indus valley were conscious of fashion a different hairstyles were followed and cinnabar uh, was used as a cosmetic from these finding it can be concluded that the artist of the time surely had artistic sensibilities and vivid imaginations they excelled in all the spheres of culture and hence can be called as a vanguard of the succeeding civilization architecture of the indus valley civilization the architectural achievements of mohenjodaro speaks the architecture of indus valley civilization in general even at such an early age the architecture of indus valley was well improved with almost all the modern am amenities the people seem to have been extremely wealthy judging from the excellent mansionery and careful uh, and carefully built houses the indus valley architecture throughout the area the civic planning was based on the rectangular grid pattern standardized brick was the main building material a high portion of 
the population lived in the well-drained courtyard houses. Features of the architecture of the Indus Valley Civilization The main features of the architecture of Indus Valley Civilization were the cities were based on town planning and followed a grid layout. The roads were laid at exact right angles. Baked bricks were used for building houses. Bricks were all of standard size. Most of the buildings are designed to be functional rather than decorative. There are no terrace, uh, traces of temple architecture or other religious places at the people practiced religion. Some notable structures of Indus Valley civilization are the following. The Great Bath The most impressive structure excavated at Mohenjadaro is the Great Bath. It is constructed with clean burnt bricks. This monumental bath is a pool which is 12 meters long, 7 meters wide and 2.5 meters deep. Gypsum along with mortar has been used to make the floor of the walls of the pool waterproof. The pool is in the center of large open quadrangle with rooms and galleries on all the sides. Step at either end connects it with the room. It may, it may have been used by the people for changing their clothes. The granary of at Arappa. The granary at Harappa is made of burnt bricks. It is built closely to the river Ravi to make transportation easy and comprised of two blocks. Each block has six storage rooms of 15 meter long and six meter wide. The two blocks are separated by a passage. Adducts were are provided under the wooden floor. The row of triangular opening may have been for ventilation. The granary com complex measures 55 meters by, by 43 meters. The presence of huge granaries suggests an organized collection and distribution system. The Pillared Hall of Mohenjadaro The Pillared Hall of Mohenjadaro was a large hall covered by roof and supported by 20 rectangular pillars averaging 5 feet by 3 feet, 4 inches in thickness. It, in its present form, not all the pillars are traceable. However, there, there is a, enough evidence to support that originally there were five pillars in each row. Though there was no remarkable accuracy as far as the spacing in the pillar are concerned, but the whole layout is, in its entirely speaks for a greater proficiency. Gypsum and mud mortar were used in the columns. The exact purpose of this construction is unknown. However, it is thought to be an assembly hall of some kind. Dockyard at Lothal The dockyard at Lothal makes it an important site for archaeology. It covers an area of 37 meters from east to west and nearly 22 meters from north to south. However, there is no con consensus that the structure was used as a dockyard. Some of the archaeologists argue that this place had been a reservoir. The dockyard was located away from the main current to avoid deposition of salt. It is believed that the construction was done by highly skilled mason taking into account the, account the tidal movement and their impact on the brick built structures. Since the walls are, uh, are of clean burnt bricks which can be easily corroded by salty water of the sea. Even the selection of the spot of the dockyard was burdened taking into account the highest tidal amplitude of Gulf of Kambat which could propel ships easily through the flow of tides in the river estuary. Next, Citadel of Harappa. Generally speaking, a citadel is the core fortified area of the town or a city. The citadel in Harappa was 12 meters tall. In its, uh, it was located on the western end of the site. It was an area representing a parallelogram, 420 meters in length from north to south and 9, uh, 196 meters from east to west. A large staircase ran up 
the side of this mound several large buildings and structures on the citadel mound is suggest that this area may have been used for public gathering religious activities and important administrative activities in next class let us study about art and architecture in the mauryan period thank you